Hey everyone, welcome back to the Be Lead, Be Real, Be Bold podcast. I know I've gone through a couple of iterations and series recently. If you haven't caught that yet, click that subscribe button and scroll back through the most recent episodes where I was interviewing people specifically on their Enneagram, attachment style, and modern dating. It was a fun little series. And once it was done, I finally decided to take a good long break from the podcast. And that brings us to our topic of today, COVID fatigue. Man, did, did COVID fatigue really set in with me after about 18 months of just pushing myself to the max professionally, personally, uh, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, all of the above really hit home around August, uh, maybe September and October is when I really began to feel the effects of COVID fatigue, you know, finding as many distractions as I possibly could in my life so that I didn't necessarily have to face everything that was coming up for me uh, amidst a global pandemic. And a lot went into that decision to take a break from the podcast. It was much needed. I had been producing at least an episode a week for three years, and I appreciate your patience and kindness, um, along with the support that everyone brought to me in, in my time of need. You know, I, I understood that I was pushing myself really hard, and I also understood that taking a break from things is a good thing. You know, taking a break from dating every once in a while. If you're overwhelmed and fatigued with dating, can feel a lot like what I was experiencing with COVID fatigue. You know, you just kind of push yourself to the max. Maybe one or two dates a week for six weeks is, is a lot that don't necessarily turn into a second or a third date if that's what you're looking for. And that's what I was experiencing with my life in general. You know, I was trying way too hard, all in the podcast, all in the relationship coaching side of my business, the fitness coaching side of my business. And even just saying that out loud now really makes, really reminds me of how much I was trying to accomplish each and every week, not to mention going through a breakup, you know, that relationship ended at the, you know, ended around the end of July, beginning of August. And I really sat with the, that as an opportunity to slow down and to kind of reevaluate what was important to me at the time. And I couldn't be more grateful for some things that showed up in my life at that time, you know, amidst COVID fatigue, I could still find myself being grateful for a lot of things that were in my life. Uh, my church men's group was immediately there to support me. Uh, you know, the, the night of my relationship ending, my man talks men's group um, also there to support me the night of and within the next few weeks as well. Um, I got to take an opportunity to get into the mountains, experience some solitude a little bit, and yet still check in with my men's groups uh, while I was in the mountains. I had another trip planned up, planned coming this weekend, and unfortunately, the snow in Denver really put a, uh, a stop to that trip. So I took a four-day weekend from work. I was planning on getting out of town on Thursday. Turns out I won't be going out of town at all, and that's okay with me. Because that's part of what COVID fatigue and the experience uh, I had last October, November, et cetera, you know, throughout the fall and into the winter uh, was COVID fatigue was just like, I got to keep these plans. I got to, it was almost like fear of missing out, you know, was showing up a lot for me. Fear of missing out on being the leader of this community, fear of missing out on communicating with the members of this community and those that listen to the podcast. And like I was saying, I have a lot of gratitude for those two men's groups who were there to support me through this, as well as the community members who I did get the chance to speak to individually, whether they were in small group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, or simply just through the Instagram and now TikTok accounts. There was a lot of support that I can be grateful for uh, amidst uh, a lot of what was coming up for me in the fall of 2021. So now that I reflect back on that time frame. Uh, now that it's February of 2022, I get to look back at that time in my life and understand that taking a break from producing the podcast was really good for me. And I, again, I want to extend my gratitude for your support, each and every person who did reach out along uh, uh, in the middle of that COVID fatigue experience. I began in uh, an old career path. I started back up in the catering 
service and operations world, um, it's kind of like uh, an opportunity for me to heal some financial wounds that I was facing, um, understand that focusing on one thing for a little while is really good for our financial, mental, emotional, and physical health. So yes, I still got the opportunity to coach fitness clients along the way in that time frame. Um, I was able to back off on coaching fitness clients and really kind of start to put people uh, into areas where they were best served, whether that be group coaching or one-on-one -on -one coaching or delegating them to members of our community, you know, trainers that are very enthusiastic about coaching clients one-on-one -on -one or in small group are now supporting me. And it helped that I was open with my man talks group and one of the trainers in man talks is now a part of the team. He's taking on clients here in the Denver area. We Thai instructor, kickboxing instructor, jujitsu black belt, a good friend of mine, and now a teammate that we can uh, send our clients to who want in-person coaching in a small studio private space. So um, I'm really grateful for how I approached communicating my COVID fatigue with my brothers in Man Talks. And out of that conversation came a beautiful collaboration where um, our clients at Fit Life get the opportunity to have an enthusiastic coach who's not burnt out, who's all in with their goals, their passion, their purpose for beginning a fitness routine. And it also helps me still impact people's lives through fitness, which I'm still passionate about. No matter what comes up in my world, I'm still passionate about coaching people through their fitness journey. If that means that I have that I get the opportunity to bring on some trainers, some fresh ideas, some new energy into the business, then I'm going to do that because I can't put in session after session after session hours for the rest of my life. It's just not doable especially if I want to reach the financial goals that I have for that Fit Life Champions business. So again, want to extend some gratitude for the support along the way as I kind of retooled and re in, uh, set a new vision for what my fitness business was going to look like. And I got the opportunity to step back into the catering world too. So it gives me a good base salary so that I can pursue other passions like fitness coaching and relationship coaching. So that kind of brings you up to speed on how COVID fatigue really hit me hard in the fall of 2021. And I'm really looking forward to pouring back into this community with the energy that I have found to be renewed for my professional life, my personal life, and uh, my coaching experience too, coaching the community in whatever comes up for them. And that's where uh, the Lift, Laugh, Love series of the podcast has come from, is just a lot of that processing and becoming even more self-aware of who I am as a coach and understanding that I needed the break. And now that I've gotten time to sit with all of those emotions that were coming up for me, all the physical and mental challenges that I was facing throughout that six month period, I have a renewed energy and I have a very creative opportunity to um, move the podcast in a different direction. Yes, we always talked about how fitness supported our mental, emotional, and um, spiritual health. That was part of the five pillars of optimal health that we've, that we've created in our, in, our, in our community as the foundational principles of how we coach, how we live. It's a value-based system or a value-based um, community focus of mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, and financial health. Those are the five pillars. And the lift uh, portion of our podcast series comes from that fitness. How does fitness, lifting, exercising regularly, even jujitsu, how does that play into and show up for us in our uh, optimal health? And how does that impact our emotional, our mental, spiritual, and financial health as well? So the lift, laugh, love will incorporate more conversations about how fitness can impact our lives and some helpful tools along the way to help support our community in boosting that pillar of, pillar of our optimal health. I feel as if I wasn't using a strength of mine, which is inspiring people to take action in their physical and, and uh, physical well-being and overall health and well-being. And I want to pour more into this community with that fitness aspect of the Lift, Laugh, Love series of the podcast. Of course, the laughter that we've experienced along the way, 
whether it be interviewing guests and their unique ideas and their candor and their uh, comedy that they bring to the podcast interviews, I want to I want to explore how laughter really impacts our mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, and financial well-being as well. So the Lift, Laugh, Love, Lift, Laugh, Love series of the podcast is going to incorporate a lighter side to fitness and a lighter side to pursuing relationships in our lives, whether that be coworkers, family, romantic relationships, or simply just um, new experiences. You know, I came across somebody in Sprouts one day. I was doing my grocery shopping, had my mask on. I think I even had my hat on, you know, and this woman walks past me and she's like, wow, you have really beautiful eyes. And I was taken aback. I was like, wow, that, that's a great opening line. That wasn't even a line. She simply just wanted to spread joy and, and positively influence my day. And she did. And, and I, after I took a moment to pause and re- re- collect, uh, collected, uh, collected myself, Uh, after the compliment, I repaid the compliment and said, I really like your style. Nothing ever came from it because I wasn't necessarily looking for anything romantic from that interaction. And I don't believe that she was either. It was simply just one way to lighten the mood or lighten the experience of grocery shopping in the middle of a pandemic, where I believe we had just had new mask mandates come down. So after three or four months of not wearing a mask at all in public, back to wearing masks, and she took the one physical feature that she could see of, of a perfect stranger and completely turned around my day. And I was really appreciative and got the opportunity to repay that compliment. So we're going to pursue uh, how fitness impacts our um, optimal health, our health and well-being. We're going to explore how laughter and uh, lightheartedness impacts our optimal health and well-being. And then finally, we're still going to focus on the love portion of the podcast, because this was always founded on reaching out to therapists, counselors, authors, speakers, people who knew more about love and relationships than I did three and a half years ago, now almost four years ago, reaching out to them, interviewing them on their their areas of expertise so that we could grow uh, through education to find our most authentic selves. And when we show up as our most authentic selves in dating and relationships, we find that we will attract in kind that authentic person that we can build a connection, not an attachment. We can build a foundation based on connection, not attachment. And that is the purpose of this Lift, Laugh, Love series with me as your host, Dave Glazer. Uh, it's fun to it's fun to get back into the rhythm of hosting the podcast and talking for a certain amount of time. No preparation went into this podcast other than the three things that I wanted to talk about. And I think that I've only talked about one of them. So let me refer back to my notes so that uh, we can get back on track. Uh, one of the tools that we will use uh, to highlight uh, the fitness, how fitness impacts our optimal health and well-being is through fitness facts. Uh, connect with me on Facebook. You can search my name, Dave Glazer, where I share a fun fact, a fun fact about fitness uh, almost daily. Um, one of my most recent favorite ones is that fitness can make us better in bed, and it can improve a lot of areas of our life as it comes to our romantic relationships. And one of those areas is. Um, attractiveness or confidence or prowess in the bedroom. And we can make a lot of jokes about how fitness and cardio could help us in the bedroom. But also, I think underlying that fun fitness fact is simply just when we have confidence in the way that we that we look at ourselves, well, then we show up more confident in the bedroom. And that leads to a more enjoyable sex with, uh, with our partners or sex with ourselves, depending on how, uh, what your relationship status is at this time. And then finally, the last thing that I wanted to discuss on the Lift, Laugh, Love podcast to kick off this series was jumping back on online dating in October, maybe late October, and going out on maybe 10 or 12 first dates since then, um, very few second or third or fourth dates since then. But 
I can find myself becoming fatigued with online dating as well. You know, there's that uh, starting a conversation, getting into the talking stage, exchanging numbers, then texting and then setting the first date. It's like a rinse and repeat over and over and over again until you find somebody that is an authentic match for you, who is at that energetic level that you're looking for. And it takes time. And I find myself uh, getting a little frustrated and a little worn out and a little overwhelmed and a little bit fatigued from the process of meeting somebody, matching somebody with somebody online, and then um, having it having it just kind of fizzle out where you're like, all right, I invested some energy there. Uh, questions come up for me of like, why would you match with somebody and then never continue the conversation? And then it brings into um, that fatigue part or that frustration part and that insecurity part of like, well, now do I internalize that? And do I um, attach that, that fizzling out of online dating conversations to my self-worth? And that's what I face when I show up online dating. Yes, I've had some incredible first dates since October. Have I had some poor first dates since October? Yes, absolutely. And if that's the case, then I just don't pursue a second date. If I enjoy myself, I'll pursue a second date. And at that point, uh, the other person who we went out on a date with gets the opportunity to choose. I extend the invitation and they get the opportunity to choose. And this is the part that fascinates me about my experience since October is that I'm not taking the rejection personally. I'm actually approaching the second date with non-attachment because I went into setting up the profile with non-attachment as well. And I mentioned just a moment ago of that frustration of like, why match and not continue the conversation? Well, that shows me that I'm not approaching my entire online dating experience with a philosophy of non-attachment. And that's something that I can take a look at now that I, now that I put words to it, now that I put it out there, um, I'm definitely going to focus on approaching all of the online dating process with a philosophy and a mindset of non-attachment. Non-attachment could be described as like, I'm not going to uh, invest emotions with somebody that I just simply matched with on an online dating app. Yes, I can become interested and curious and attracted to this person, but I'm not necessarily invested in who they are until we meet in person. And that's how I can approach multiple matches that go nowhere, that don't get out of the talking stage, might even exchange numbers and not get out of the talking stage. And that's how I can approach this whole um, meeting people online with non-attachment. If that resonates with you, uh, don't hesitate to reach out with me on multiple platforms. Uh, TikTok has been a lot of fun. Dave.Glazer on TikTok, uh, Dave Glazer underscore CSCS on Instagram. I'm very present and messaging daily on Instagram. If you're looking for coaching, then join us either Monday nights or Thursday nights for small group, semi-private, members-only exclusive virtual coaching done through Zoom. Um, we are beginning a brand new series of group coaching right now, and I'm super pumped to invite people from all over the world. Um, it does not matter where you're at in the, in the world, we can fit you into a small group. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one support, as you get out there, matching with people online, <laughs> dealing with social media, experiencing COVID fatigue, then please reach out, connect with me, and we'll do a one-on-one -on -one consultation absolutely free uh, so that we can make sure that we're the right fit for each other. If you're not the right fit for our coaching program and I'm not the right coach for you, then I will definitely refer you out to one of our many, many, many resources in the community of the Believe, Be Real, Be Bold podcast for authentic dating that we have compiled over the last four years. There are so many coaches, therapists, counselors, speakers, authors that I have connected with that I trust that I would be happy to connect you with. So if you're looking for a little bit more support in romance, fitness, or just need a little bit of uh, candor in your life, then don't hesitate to reach out. And if you get the chance, please share this episode with somebody that you feel would get a lot of value out of the conversation. Thank you so very much. Wishing you health and happiness wherever you're at in the world.